gonna let me down And you're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let You're never gonna let me Silence the boast, 
of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are switch gears uh, for a minute and I'm going to switch off the piano and we're going to hit some fun music. Here it comes, I can hear it. All right. So tonight we are starting a brand new series called Relationships. Zach? Yeah, nice. Yeah. And uh, we're talking about navigating people and the challenges that come with different relationships all through the series, okay? Mm, okay. And it's very important. This series is brought to you by the letter P. Yeah, it's very important to understand, okay? Uh, and all through the series, we're going to be talking about topics starting with the letter P, okay? Who's on P plates here? Yeah. Well, like green, right. I'm on green peas. I kind of... <laughs> green peas? Green peas, yeah. You're on green peas? Yeah. I don't know. I hope not. I didn't know there were Greenpeace. Uh, anyway, okay, so tonight Winnie uh, is bringing us a message on, believe it or not, pets, products, and people. Hand up if you've heard a message in church about pets before. <laughs> well, we're, you're about to get one, and it is brilliant. Uh, we're looking forward to that. But um, before we do, we're going to have some fun because, uh, Zach, I don't know about you, but I have um, possessions. There's another P word. We're not. I don't think that's one of them. I, but I also have possessions. We have possessions um, that are very precious, precious? to us. Could see, you even say that See what like I did there? Prized possessions? Prized like possessions, like indeed. Mm. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm just thinking on the spot okay. here. Anyway, um, we, we, we surveyed uh, our team tonight, 
uh, those of us on stage, those of us uh, down the back, yeah. um, as to what their most precious possession was. And uh, here's the thing, right? We're going to show you a photo of the possession, and you have to say, you have to yell out who you think it belongs to. Okay, you got that? All right. Okay, so let's start with an easy one. Let's go, Tobes, what have we got on the screen here? Oh, there's a couple. Zach or Josh or Ollie, okay. All right, we'll see. Okay, who have we got? Let's see the answer, let's see the answer. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course it is. If you know anything about Ollie, it's his red symbols. Okay, next one, next one. Oh. That is so think, uh, that is a we've beast. Got a few, we've got a few bass players though. Yeah. Isaac, Isaac, Toby, Isaac or Toby. Oh, it's Toby. Oh, yeah, there it is. That's a cute <laughs> photo too. Okay, That's next one. Let's let's go next one. Ooh. This um, is the most prized see, possession. I, I feel like we've yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, here we go. Chick Corea. Chick Corea. Chick Corea. I don't reckon many people who know Chick Corea is, surely. <laughs> people are like, Chick, 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 there we go. Okay, what else? Oh Ooh. my goodness. <laughs> that thing's hot, man. Yeah, I was told That's you. Hot. I was told, reliably informed, that you had the car polished and uh, completely oh, like man. cleaned and everything oh. for that. Just for that photo. Yeah, lots of editing. Specifically too. for this moment, right yeah, now. Yeah, I spent three hours. Yeah, on that. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, we got. Oh, who's that one? Oh, yeah. It's a go kart. <laughs> go kart. I'm I'm also reliably informed that this is it, the real size. <laughs> what you see here is life size. Yeah, but who's it belong to? Oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. Poshmas Maximus. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Ooh. Whoa. Ooh. Tricky. Whoa. Mm. Whoa. Some some. Emma. Eh, I don't know a lot about these things. Are, they, are, these, are these pearls? Are these pearls? Yep, they're pearls. They are pearls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. who's the pearls? Oh, Winnie. Of course, Winnie, of course. Very nice, yep. Very nice pearls. Oh, here we go. Last one, I think. Mm. <laughs> Some fresh foams. I'm, I'm, Some fresh foam 1080s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Yay. laughs> It is. All right. Well, on that note, uh, Pastor Steve has got a special announcement for us, so please welcome him to the stage. Give it up for Ben and Zach. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, just very quickly, uh, the first things first, I uh, found out in the foyer there before that this Wednesday, turning the ripe old age of 18 is Brooke. Where is Brooke? Brooke's in the house here. Yeah. On your Brooke. All the best. Hip, hip. Yeah. Hip, hip. Yeah. Hip, hip. Congratulations for this Wednesday turning 18, Brooke. Well done. Hey, um, before we get into part one of this series, Relationships, I don't know about you, you're really excited about this. And uh, welcome, by the way, those who are participating online. Great to have you here with us tonight, or on demand. Um, just like to uh, bring your attention that Winnie will be with us, but not in person. She's fallen unwell over the weekend. I'm sure she's participating online. Great to have you online, Winnie. So what we do, what we've been doing in this recent season is in fact filming the speaker during the week just in case something like this happens. And so she's had her message prepared and filmed, and so we're still good to go with Winnie. Is that all right? That just in a moment. I'd love to bring to your attention what we do here each and every August here at Door of Hope is an annual sign-up to partner with us here, with our vision and mission. It's called Hope Partners. And by the way, it's free. We're certainly not trying to get anything from you in regards to this. And it's kind of like a, a form of membership. I'll come back to that just in a moment. Because we want to be very clear that this is an annual sign-up to partner with us. It's not for life. And 
and uh, it's a reminder that what we are committed to, and that's to the life of this maybe your church. And so once again, in person and for those who are online, um, we'd love for you to, to uh, simply fill out the, the, the necessary form there online uh, on the website. You've got the QR code there just in front of you. Feel free to take advantage of that. We're going to remind you of this throughout the month of August. So it's not uh, you know uh, something you need to do immediately, even though we'd love for you to do that as, as immediately as you feel you can. But uh, many of us, for example, let me talk about that for a moment. Many of us take up a, mem- a membership like uh, with your, maybe your AFL team or uh, a gym membership, for example. And uh, what that means, in fact, is you're, uh, you're, you're aligned with your particular club. And uh, you're kind of saying that we believe in what we do. We believe in what my club does. And I don't know about you, but how much more should we show our support for our local church? And so that's what Hope Partners is all about. We're saying that I want to be aligned with the vision and mission, I want to be supportive, I want to belong, I want to encourage, and also I want to be uh, able to serve here at this, my church. And so once again, we'll be doing this all throughout August. But listen, listen here for a moment. Listen to what some people, in fact, why some people love to call themselves a, a hope partner. Check this out. Hi, everyone. I'm Stu Beams. Being a hope partner gives me a platform to be involved in my church community through serving in a variety of different programs. I am a hope partner because I believe that God has called me here to this church to not just um, spectate, but to participate, not just to consume, but to contribute. And I'm so grateful he did because I love this family and this church community. So why wouldn't I be a hope partner? By being a Hope Partner, I get the opportunity to commit to the church that I call home. I also get to honour God and put faith in this commitment as He has placed me in this church family to fellowship, serve, love, contribute and worship Him here where He has put me. I sign up to be a Hope Partner every year because I know it's really good for my spiritual health to be planted in a local church community. It also um, helps me to uh, communicate with the church leaders that I'm, um, I'm supporting them, that I'm praying for them and that I'm willing to be an active part of our church community. No partners, why not? It's being part of the family. We are starting a new series called Relationships. Navigating People, Problems, and Priorities. I'm very excited because the, because the topics over the next few weeks are very important topics based on the climate of our culture. So shall we begin? Let's start with prayer. God, I want to thank you that your heart is for relationships. So Holy Spirit, we ask that you come and speak to us. Let our hearts be ready and open for you to speak to us. Teach us, Lord, about relationships. In Jesus' name, amen. When asked what the greatest commandment was, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. All the law and prophets is referring to the Old Testament. And then the New Testament takes the Old Testament and fulfills it. So basically, the whole Bible is, if if you want to summarize the whole Bible, it would be this, to love God and to love people. In other words, the most important thing in our lives is to love God and love people, our relationship with God and with people. That's the most important thing in life. Our purpose, our meaning in life is relationship with God and people. It's no wonder that when people are on their deathbeds, what do they regret the most and what are they most thankful for? Oh, I wish I had spent more time working in my office. Or I wish I had a better phone. I wish I had a bigger collection of guitars. I wish I had made more TikTok videos. 
I'm so glad I made so much money. Or I'm so glad my hair was always perfect. I'm so glad that I was such a famous influencer for five minutes. I'm so glad that I always had the best Christmas lights. No, it's things like this. I wish I had spent more time with my family. Or I wish I had been a better husband or father. Or I wish I had been kinder to my family and friends. When people are happy on their deathbeds, it's usually because they have peace with God and surrounded by people they love, loving them. It's relationships people lament for and um, thankful for. Now, relationships with God is wonderful, isn't it? He loves us, he is always there for us, he doesn't annoy us. But people, on the other hand, I'd like you to turn to the person next to you and tell them the most annoying thing that your sibling or your spouse does. Go ahead, the person next to you, the person in front of you, tell them, what's the most annoying thing your sibling or your spouse does? relationship with people is tricky. Do you know why? Because people have free will. They make choices. They don't always do what we want them to do. They disagree with us and they offend us. Other times, it's not just annoying. They hurt us. They fail us. They betray us. And that's why we see memes like these. Let's take a look. And these. I have met quite a few people who have said to me that they don't trust people anymore because people let them down. But their pets are faithful and are there for them. So instead of investing into relationships with people, they focus on their pets instead. This has got to be the strangest topic I will ever, ever preach on, I think. It's on pets and stuff. <laughs> so ready? Let's go. Pets first. I love my pets. They are my babies. If you are friends with me on social media, you will know that. Uh, my husband and I, Tim and I, both grew up around pets, and now our children are growing up around pets and we love them. And here are some pictures to prove it. The first one is from years ago when my husband was holding um, a, a litter of puppies from one of our dogs. Oh, so cute. And then the next one is a picture of my son with our friend's pet snake. Um, Matthew has since wanted a pet snake, but we live in Tasmania, so he is not getting a pet snake. Um, that was a vine snake, and it was not poisonous, okay? And the next one is of Sandra and our cat, and we think this is like the best picture. Um, uh, next one is of Angel and our dog, and that's how she interacts with our dog, Tutu. And the last one is me and my dog with a leaf for modesty. So what does the Bible say about our pets? In Genesis chapter 1, the writer tells us the chronology of creation. In the beginning, when God had created day and night, sky and land, sea and dry ground, plants and vegetation, the stars, the sun, the moon, and animals, then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that scurry along the ground. I want to denote five things here. Number one, humans are made in the image of God. Number two, humans 
are the crown of creation. Number three, we are not the same as animals. Number four, we are not animals. We are the only human, uh, sorry, image bearers of God. And fifthly, we are to reign over the animals. Okay, I'm going to read that passage again. God said, let us make human beings in our image. So this is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit talking to each other to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, the small animals that scurry along the ground. And then in Genesis chapter two, the writer details the creation account. God created the man first. And then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. And based on Genesis 1, we know that God had created the animals. So the Lord God had already formed from the ground all the wild animals and the birds of the sky. So he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And the man chose a na name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. But still... There was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. Two things to note. God brought animals to Adam for companionship. When God was looking for a helper for Adam, he brought the animals that he had created to Adam. So animal companionship is biblical. It wasn't until later that animal was given to us for food. Animal was first brought to us for companionship. However, second thing to note, animal companionship is no substitute for human community. Because when God had brought the animals to Adam, God said, uh, not quite good enough. So God made a woman. Because ultimately, the perfect helper for us is, um, the, the perfect community for us is people with people. So God brought the animals to Adam for companionship, but animal companionship is no substitute for human community, okay? So how should we relate to our pets then? Firstly, enjoy their companionship. God brought them to us for companionship. Pets bring us so much joy, don't they? Except when they're feral puppies. But even then, they bring us so much joy. They love us unconditionally, except cats. Cats don't love us, but my cat loves us. Uh, what about fish? I don't get fish. Why do people have fish? Do your fish love you? Well, I know someone who had a fish tank and a big fish tank, and he knew all the drama that was happening with the fish, and he would tell me stories about the relationship between the fish. And there were these two fish, that were the same kind. One of those fish was psycho, like its face was crooked and it would like ram into other fish and abuse them and attack them. And um, because he would hurt other fish, so this person would then get, a, he got a smaller tank as a hospital tank. <laughs> so he would fish up all the injured fish and put them in the hospital tank and put medicine in it. Then he decided that the psycho fish needed to some rehabilitation. So he had a prison tank, a smaller tank, and he would remove that and put it into the prison tank for a while uh, before he was released back into community, uh, before to society. And it was incredible. Like this, this person would tell me all about his fish. I found it very weird. My father had a tortoise, tortoise. 
I've been telling this story. I said it was a turtle. Actually, no, I, I thought about it. It was a tortoise. The tortoise had been with us for a long time. I, the tur I don't know where it came from. Dad said it came from the drain. So he just took it home. And then it free ranged in the house. It would walk all around the house in the bathroom. We hated it. Only dad loved it. It would walk all around the house. It would come into the bathroom when we were having showers. It would look at us. It's so disgusting. It was so disgusting. Dad would cut little bits of chicken to feed to it. It got so fat, it had like fat bulging out from the sides. And we had a full length mirror and this tortoise would stand in front of the mirror and stretch his leg and admire himself. It was just really weird and really gross. But what was worst was this, we love our dogs. And um, all our dogs love dad. And um, because the tortoise was free ranging, the tortoise was free to abuse our dogs. So at the end of the day, when dad came home from work, the dogs would be like, oh, dad's home. And they'll be running to dad. And then the tortoise would come running too, except the tortoise would bite the dog's legs so that they couldn't get to dad. Um, it, it was not nice and it was disgusting. And one day we found the tortoise dead in the dog's drinking bowl, head down. We think a murder had happened, we don't know. But um, yeah, you know, whatever makes you tick, I suppose, with my dad, the tortoise did. Enjoy them, enjoy your pet, enjoy the companionship of your pet. pet. I believe God takes delight in us enjoying our pets. Secondly, take care of them and love them. God gave us the earth and animals to look after not to exploit. Proverbs 12 says that the, the righteous cares for the needs of the animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Let's take a look at how this family cares for their animal. So, take care of them, love them, bathe them, please. But remember that they are not humans. We are to reign over them and not to let them reign over us. It's very easy to go overboard with our pets and let them rule our lives. Don't let your caring for your pets dictate your life. I can't travel. I can't invite people to my house. I can't do this. I can't do that because of my pets. I love my pets to bits. They're my babies. In one of the pictures, you saw my daughter with our cat, Mikey, and Mikey actually died recently. And it hurts so bad, it still hurts. We love our pets. But at the end of the day, relationship with humans are priority. If you have friends and family members elsewhere that you need to go and spend time with, go. Don't say, I can't go see them. Who will look after my pets? Well, find a way. There are boarding houses. There are pet sitters. Find a way. Don't let caring for your pets stop you from investing in the most important thing in your life. Relationships with people the very people that God has put in your lives. All right, that's pets. Another thing that people devote their lives to instead of investing in relationships with people is stuff. <laughs> yes, stuff. Last week, I spoke on tithing, on money, on giving 10% of our income to God. After church, Tim and I uh, we're sitting at home and we were reflecting on the message and, and Tim wisely said this, it's funny how we work so hard to make money to buy stuff, lots and lots of stuff. And then we need to make more money to keep our stuff safe. We get protection gear for our stuff, we get insurance for our stuff, and then we get a will 
so we know who gets our stuff. And it's just stuff. When I say stuff, we think, oh, no, not me. I'm not like that. Well, the thing is, we all like different stuff. When I think of lawnmowers and stuff like that, I also say, yeah, not me. But when I think of shoes, clothes, jewelry, thermomixes, beautiful kitchenware, furniture, massages, holidays, trips to marvelous destinations, eating all manner of delectable foods in all different amazing restaurants. That $3 million house over there, stuff sounds very different. I want stuff. What stuff do you like? Have a think about it. Phones, computers, sound systems, that new kitchen, cars, a house. Would you like a house? What's your most prized possession now? Think about it. What's your most, the thing that you own that is the most precious and expensive to you? Jesus said, watch out. Be on your guard against all kind of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Now, replace that word possessions with your stuff. Be on your guard against all kind of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of shoes, guitars, cars. Many years ago, before any of my children uh, were born, um, Tim and I were running Youth Alpha. And back then, we didn't have the Ben and Jason videos that are so awesome that you guys get to watch these days. We had to give live talks using PowerPoint slides. And we, we had to use a laptop, connect it to a projector, and we would give the live talks. We had a group of students who were coming week in and week out who were not Christians. They wanted to hear all about Jesus. They wanted to come to know Jesus. And um, I remember it was a Saturday afternoon, half an hour before Youth Alpha was about to start, we realized we couldn't get a hold of the church laptop. And we were panicking, and Tim and I didn't have a laptop because we were penniless. And then we called our friend. A friend of mine um, had recently saved up enough to buy a brand new laptop. And I remember I called her and I said, could I please borrow your laptop for two hours so that we could run Youth Alpha? She thought about it and she said, no. I was quite shocked. <laughs> and I, I don't remember the rest of the story. I don't remember what we did. But I remember that after that, I had to have a conversation with her and said I was really hurt and very disappointed, and she had had time to think about it, and she said she apologized to me that the, the preciousness of the new laptop just, you know, was covering all logic and took precedent over our relationship, or over the sharing of the gospel even. Let me ask you, if your friend needed to borrow your most prized possession now, what would you say? We want stuff for many reasons. Maybe we just like them or we simply enjoy them. Or, or sometimes we think that our stuff reflects on who we are. We want people to look at us in a certain way. Or we think that we, if we don't have this stuff, we are somehow less. Now let me turn the scenario around. If people around us don't have the stuff that you value, do you think that they are less? That's a very sobering question. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. How does my desire and relationship with stuff stack up? next to my purpose and meaning of life, of loving God and loving others? Do I love God and others more or do I love stuff more? Do we spend so much time make, uh, 
and making too much effort to make money so that we can buy more stuff, that we are neglecting the relationships that God has put in our lives. What relationship are you neglecting? Love your neighbor as yourself. Who do I need to love as myself? Let us not wait until we are on our deathbed to regret that we didn't make things right or we didn't invest in those relationships. Do it now. How is your relationship with your family, your parents, your siblings? And how is your relationship with your friends? Every day is a gift and we are not guaranteed tomorrow. And we'll get into some more worship. You're turning all the tables and calling for the time. Twelve lives upon the altar, the things we did first. Cleaning out the temple, you're cleaning out the dirt. From all your territory, you'll want to be on your church. We are your people. And you are our God, and we are your temple. Make us holy like you are.
So we re surrender if you're calling. We're coming, but not walking. We're running. God, we do re surrender. So we re surrender if you're calling. We're coming, but not walking. We're running. God, we do re surrender. So we re surrender. holy like you are. We are your children. You set us apart. Thank God for your glory. Make us holy like you are. To grace when the heart is on the fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire. Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the sea. And should I ever need reminder of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden, but another died for me. There is another in the fire.
There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So remain the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. And I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There'll be another in the waters holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding If the truth been to me I'll count the joy and come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be And I can see the light In the darkness As the darkness bows to Him I can hear the roar In the heavens As the space between where's thin I can feel the ground Shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between. It'd be another in the fire. Standing next to me, there'll be another in the waters. Holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding? How could you've been to me? I'll count the joy from every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I'll count the joy from every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I'll count the joy from every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. remain standing just for a moment and we've got a bit of time just to uh, just bow our heads and close our eyes just for a moment because just before we leave tonight I don't want to rush this I just want to spend some time with God just in prayer maybe for you here tonight maybe for you maybe for you online And I want to ask you this question as all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed and we're considering what's been shared with us and said over our lives tonight when it comes to to relationships. A little unusual kind of topic tonight when it comes to pets (laughs) and our stuff. But also when it comes to people. Where are you at with your relationships? Does something need to be mended tonight? Because I think this service would have been totally worth it if you walked out of this place and made that phone call. If you took that first step tonight, what could be reconciled What could be mended because you took that step here tonight? And when it comes to relationships, God has blessed us with each other. And he's also blessed us in a relationship with him if we choose to do so and so if you need to get right with God if you need to confess stuff within your life before him right now I'd like to pray a little prayer for you and with you and God made it possible for us to be in relationship in sending his son Jesus sending a part of himself maybe this week maybe later on tonight you'd read in the book of Philippians chapter 2 to show you those steps of demotion as Jesus left heaven and came 
to earth was born a simple in a simple way like we're all born lived and walked among us and came to give us life John 10:10 10, 10 says this that I've come to give you life and life in all of its abundance the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy And so right now, I want to give you that opportunity to step into life. To step into the life that Jesus came to bring. He showed us how to live. He showed us how to love and to look like Him. And so right now, if you are in need of relationship with Almighty God, right where you are standing, in 60 more seconds... I want to give you an opportunity to pray a little prayer and receive Jesus maybe for the very first time here tonight in your heart. And it requires confessing stuff as well. But I love to pray a little prayer. And if that's for you right now, would you just quickly, while all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed, and you may be the only person, I'm not here to embarrass you tonight. I'm here to acknowledge you. If that's you here tonight, you know you are in need of a Savior. And you want to walk with Jesus hand in hand, heart to heart. Maybe you want to recommit your life right now, either here in person or online. You might want to connect with our online pastor. Feel free to do that. If that's you here tonight, would you just raise your hand to heaven and say, Steve, include me in this little prayer you're about to pray. If that's you here tonight, just quickly just raise your hand. I just want to acknowledge, I won't call you, thank you. Thank you. I'd love to include you in that prayer. Thank you. Is there anyone else across this auditorium or online here tonight? Just quickly raise your hand and say, Steve, include me in that prayer here tonight. I need, thank you. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. There's another person over here. Three or four hands have gone up in this room here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for these hands that have have been raised to heaven here tonight. And there's a real sense that you're calling them into relationship with you once and for all. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that he left the splendor of heaven and came to earth. And if I was the only person, you still would have come. Lord, I thank you that you're intimately acquainted with all of our ways. You know us more than we know ourselves. And right now, as these people have raised their hands, either in person or online here tonight, that you are doing your good and perfect work within their lives. They are surrendering themselves to you once and for all and saying, it's no longer I who lives, but it's Christ It's Jesus who now lives in me. And I confess that I'm a bit of a mess. I've mucked up. I've said things. I've thought things. I've done things. And I don't want to go down that path anymore. I want to follow you. I want to follow your ways. Because I believe your ways are better than my ways. In fact, I believe your ways are higher in my ways. I thank you that your thoughts are certainly higher. But Lord, I thank you that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and that I have value and that you see that in spite of what the world throws at me. I'm accepted and I'm loved and I'm forgiven and I choose to live out of the overflow of that from this day on. And so Jesus, I accept you Because you accepted me, and I live for you all the days of my life. And just as we enjoy this, just this holy moment, and as all of heaven applauds for these people who have said yes to Jesus here tonight, We celebrate with them as well. It's why we exist. It's why we're a door of hope. And Father, as we continue to pray here tonight and 
we kind of, well, we celebrate our good friends who have raised their hands here tonight and said, yes, yes, yes. Instead of giving a, a giving talk, I want to pray and praise you and say thank you for the opportunity it is to give financially. We give to help see lives changed. From glory to glory, from strength to strength, you are changing people's lives, giving them hope, and you're transforming them. Oh, the only way you know how to. I can't do it. No, our team can, but only you can. And tonight we've experienced that. And I thank you for the opportunity it is to give and to, to bless this, my church, our church, your church, to see your church grow and go from strength to strength. Lord, you loved us so much that you gave us a part of yourself. And uh, we're so grateful that we get to live life in all of its abundance now. But Lord, we don't want to keep that to ourselves. We want to share that with our world that we live in, this desperate, desperate world. Here at Door of Hope, we call it a fragile and uncertain world, and it is. But Lord, I thank you for the certainty. I thank you for the certainty that we each have because of your son, Jesus. The hope that we have because of your son, Jesus. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. That we don't have to guess, we don't have to figure everything out in just these next few moments, but we can journey in life with you as the leader of our lives. And it's because of that we can't help but give. We are compelled because of all that you've blessed and encouraged us with through your son, Jesus, the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. We say thank you. We say thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us so much. And in fact, if you gave us nothing more, nothing more, we could live out of that abundance of knowing that you are good. You're a good, good father. You're a good, good God. And it's our pleasure to give back just a little portion of what we can to bless and encourage this, your church, to move forward in all that you've called it to be. To be the head and not the tail, to be above and not beneath, to be that impact and influence in our community. We thank you for this, your church, and this opportunity to give in Jesus' name. We pray this. Amen and amen. And uh, as we take our seats, is it okay if we encourage those people who raised their hands and said yes to Jesus tonight? Is that okay? Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, just as we bring our service to a close, thanks so much. Thanks, team, for leading us tonight. And um, uh, just back to the giving thing, many of us give regularly online, and we thank you for that. And uh, if you happen to bring something in, in terms of a physical gift tonight, feel free. The green box is down the back there. And... And give with purpose, give with meaning, give with thanksgiving always. And uh, if you'd also like to give online, we've got uh, a slide there that should, there it is right there, I think, uh, right behind me there. If you'd like to give online, all the links, necessarily links there are on the screen. But thank you. Thank you for being a giving church. And uh, thank you for allowing our ministry to go forth in our city and beyond in Jesus' name. Hey, a couple of things, a couple of things. Is that okay? Are we okay? Are still with us tonight? Great to have you online. Great to have you here with us. But uh, prayer will be certainly available at the end of the service. Maybe if you put your hand up here tonight, some of our team are going to be down here. We'd love to encourage you in your journey to see you move forward in that. Uh, a reminder about Hope Partners. Hope Partners, do that as soon as you possibly can. Grab the QR code there on the seat there in front of you and uh, be a part of the next 12 months in saying, I want to call Door of Hope Christian Church my home and I want to partner with the vision and the mission here. Father's Day is coming up in September. September the something, I can't remember the exact date. Fourth, thank you Dorothy's got that. September 4 is Father's Day. And between now and then, here's what we'd love for you to do. Here's what we'd love for you to do. Um, we would, we're inviting you to help us Pack the pantry. Pack the pantry. And last year we gave, check this out, we gave an emergency food to over 200 people. In 12 months, Door of Hope Christian Church, 200 people. That's to families, that's to singles. And so we want you to grab a box that's in the foyer, for either for your family, for your group of friends, or your connect group, and fill it 
with lifelong food. You understand what I mean by that? Lifelong food? Now, by the way, we sold out, well, when I say sold out, we gave away all the boxes we kind of prepared this morning. So the boxes have gone, unfortunately. However, Ben tells me we're going to do some more this week and we're going to make sure that we have boxes ready and ready to go next Sunday before now, uh, before uh, Father's Day kicks in um, uh, on September, September the 4th. So uh, grab a box next Sunday. Hey, uh, online alpha. And Youth Alpha is happening August 17. August 17. Have we got a slide for that one? Online Alpha. Here we go. Here it is. There we go. And Youth Alpha. Alpha is all about explaining Christianity. It's a wonderful course. Wonderful course. I've taken friends there over the years, and I can't encourage you enough. It's a great way to start your Christian walk and your Christian faith. That's Online Alpha and Youth Alpha starting August 17. Next week, we've got a special guest bringing part two to our series on relationships. His name is Dr. Graham pool. If there was any Sunday, I would encourage you to be here. It's next Sunday night. Dr. Graham Poole has got some very important things to speak to us about when it comes to relationships. His title, the title of his message next Sunday, wait for it, is this, is Pronouns, Place, and Purpose. Next Sunday, you will not want to miss this. In fact, I still think we're finding out if we're actually going to record this or in fact, not go live, all right? So I want you to know we may not go live next Sunday night. We're still figuring this out because it's pretty full on and it's pretty awesome what Dr. Graham Poole is going to share with us next Sunday night. Don't forget to hang with us on Hangs coming up next. It's free food, free food, and we've got wraps tonight, wraps tonight. We'd love for you to stay. It's just in the foyer outside there and uh, feel free to join us. But also, please, also, if you are new to Door of Hope, uh, the time is 6.12. At 6.30, bring your food in. I'm going to be hanging out in the Hope Lounge with Courtney. He's going to join me tonight. And uh, we're going to sit down and we're going to bring you 10, 15 minutes on the past, the present, and the future of Door of Hope Christian Church and help answer any questions. We don't normally do this at 5 o'clock, but there are so many new people here. I'd like to invite you in in 15 15- 17, 18 minutes time, 18 minutes time to join me at 6.30 in the Hope Lounge, the room just outside of these auditorium doors. And we're going to have just a live chat with myself, the pastor here at Door of Hope, and Courtney, one of our great girls here at Door of Hope, to, to help answer any questions that you have. Just give us 15 minutes. We'd love to have some time with you. All that said and done, thanks for being with us. What a great message from Winnie tonight. My wife and I, we have this argument about whether pets are going to heaven or not. That's a good little question to kind of consider during the week, but uh, we have three cats. We have three cats, Winston, George, and Matilda. There is no way that those three animals are coming into heaven. Anyway, God bless. Go in faith, hope, and love. (laughs) 